answer with our thanks to God and share them with the world. Oh, what a wonderful gift. Oh, what a wonderful gift. As we head into the final week preparing for the Christmas season, like we've been doing all through Advent, I have a special Christmas prayer to share with you to help carry you through this time of joy and hope and love and peace towards that manger. Loving Father, help us to remember the birth of a baby Jesus so that we may share in the songs of angels the gladness of shepherds and the worship of the wise men. Close the door to hate and open the door to love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desire with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing of the child and teach us to be merry and clear with our hearts. May the Christmas morning that is coming make us happy to be the children. And the Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts. Through forgiving and forgiveness. And for Jesus. Amen. As we continue with Sunday School today, I invite you, if you have a candle at home, to go and get it as we prepare to light our Advent candles. And this Sunday, we'll be lighting all four Advent candles. We light the hope candle to remind us that Christ is the hope of the world. The peace candle to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace the joy candle to remind us of God's abundant joy and the love candle to remind us of God's abundant love. May you focus on God's hope, peace, joy, and love this Advent season. Amen. Everything has changed. It is now the time of the color purple. Purple is the color of kings and queens. No one could wear purple in those days except royal purple. Roman citizens could wear a little strip of purple, but that was all. Purple is a serious color, and something serious is about to happen. A king is coming, but he is not the kind of king that people thought was coming. This king had no army, no great house, and no riches. The king was a baby who was born in a barn. This is full of mystery. You know, a mystery is hard to enter sometimes. That is why this time of Advent is so important. Sometimes people can walk right through a mystery and not even know it's there. This time of year, you will see, purple, you will see people hurrying in the malls, buying their things and doing this and that but they will miss the mystery. They don't know how to get ready, or maybe they just forgot. The church learned a long time ago that people need a way to get ready to enter or even come close to the mystery like Christmas. The church set aside four weeks to get ready. This is such a great mystery that it takes a long time to get ready. During this time, we are all on the way to Bethlehem. We are all making a journey. We are all getting ready to enter the mystery of Christmas. So let's go with the prophets, the holy family, the shepherds, the angels, the magi, and all the rest to make the journey that was not just back then, it is also now. The first Sunday of Advent, we talk about the prophets. And the prophets show us the way to Bethlehem. They point us the way to Bethlehem. 
They didn't know exactly what was going to happen there, but they knew this was the place. This Sunday, this first Sunday in Advent, is the time we remember the prophets. There's the prophet that is pointing the way to Bethlehem, showing us the way too. We need to stop and watch and pay attention to that hope that the prophets are showing us. We light the candle of hope for the first Sunday in Advent. We're going to continue on our journey in our second Sunday of Advent. This is the Sunday of peace. And this Sunday, we talk about the, royal, the Holy Family. Mary and Joseph, and they're traveling to Bethlehem. And they didn't travel alone. They traveled with a donkey. And it's the Sunday of peace, the second Sunday of Advent, because Mary is pregnant. And the donkey helped out a lot. Sometimes she would ride the donkey, and then she'd get uncomfortable and she'd have to walk. And the donkey would walk alongside of her. Then she'd get uncomfortable walking, and she'd have to ride the donkey. And it was back and forth and back and forth. And that gave Joseph a great amount of peace because it's very hard to keep a pregnant wife happy when she's pregnant and walking so far. And so our second Sunday of Advent is when we remember the Holy Family and we light the candle of peace. We carry on our journey onto the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of Joy. This is the card of the shepherds. And today we remember the shepherds on the third Sunday of Advent. And we remember them being in the fields around Bethlehem, keeping their sheep. They were trying to stay awake so the wolves could not come and get the sheep. And suddenly there was much light in the air, in the sky and it hurt their eyes. They were so afraid. Their hearts were beating so loudly when they could hear something beside their own, when they could hear something besides their own hearts, they thought they heard the singing in the sky. That also scared them, and then until they heard the words of the song, the angels were singing, don't be afraid. And so of course the shepherds weren't afraid. That's how angels work. They make us not afraid just by saying, don't be afraid. The angels say it's something like this. Don't be afraid. We bring you tidings of great joy, peace on earth and goodwill to everyone. A child is born. Go, hurry, run to Bethlehem to see the child who will change everything. Because there was so much joy in the air, the third Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of joy. And we mark that with a pink ribbon or a pink candle. All the other candles are the same color, but today the joy candle is pink. And we remember how joyful the shepherds were to be the first to learn about the baby being born. On the fourth Sunday of Advent, we remember the Magi. The three wise men, they came from far in the east. And they were wise people. So wise that people thought they were magic. We get the word magic from the name they were called in their own language, the Magi. Of all the things they knew, they knew the most about the stars. They knew where each star was supposed to be at each time of the year so they could tell people when it was time to plant their crops or take a trip on the ocean in a boat or cross the high mountain passes when the snow wasn't too deep. Suddenly, they saw a wild star. It was not like any other star that was in, on any of the maps. It went where it wanted to go. It did not stay put. 
They decided to follow the wild star to see where it was going and what it wanted to show them. They followed the star all the way to Bethlehem, but they came so far away, they went so far away, and they got there after the baby was born. There was all, they were always late, it seems. Every late year they were late. They usually didn't arrive until January 6th. But we remember them anyways, because like us, they too are on the way to Bethlehem. And because they traveled so far and with such conviction, we remember the Magi this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of love, because it took a great deal of love and trust for them to travel so far. We have finally made it to Christmas. We have finally finished our journey to Bethlehem. And of course on Christmas and Christmas Eve, we remember the most important person of this entire story. And that of course is baby Jesus being born on Christmas. Now, we celebrate Christmas and we focus on Jesus. And it was a shocking story of Jesus being born in a barn. But the most shocked of this entire story was not who you would think. A lot of people think it was the kings or the Pharisees or the people in power or Mary and Joseph themselves. But the most surprised person and the most surprised character in the story was the old cow. Because when she woke up in the morning, she went to her trough to eat her breakfast of hay and couldn't because lo and behold, there was a baby there. So, we have finished our journey to Advent and to Bethlehem. And so we light the Christ candle last. As all the light comes and illuminates the world from darkness to light. friends, welcome to the fourth Sunday of Advent. We are almost there. One, we are one week away from Christmas. Are you excited? I sure am. So today we are going to do a fun craft together. The fourth Sunday of Advent. Do you know what that candle stands for? Can you think? It's love. Did you guess that? Well, for our craft, we are going to do something that represents love and remind you how much Jesus loves you. Our craft today is a heart with baby Jesus on it and our saying on our heart says, of all things, of all gifts, I'm sorry, both big and small, my Jesus is the best of all. All you need for this craft is some red construction paper, some yellow construction paper, some blue construction paper, and some color construction paper to use for Jesus's face. So let's get started. So to make the heart, I find it can be tricky to make both sides of the heart the same size if I'm just drawing it freehand. So what I do as a trick is I take a half a piece of, or a, sorry, a piece of paper and I fold it in half and then I draw just a half of the heart. 
just like this. Just like that. You see that? And then I cut it. I cut just the half, just, I cut the both sides out because I've, I've cut my paper or I've folded my paper in half. So when I cut out both sides, then I get a complete heart where both sides are even. Now, if you're good at drawing hearts freehand, you go right ahead. You just do whatever makes you happy. So now that I've got my red heart, because I used my white piece of paper to trace my red heart, then I cut it out once I've traced it, and then I can go on to my, my little yellow piece that I'm using for my manger, my manger grass. So all you need to do for this piece here is just take your scissors and go in and out, in and out, in and out to make it look raggedy, like hay might look, okay? Now, if you maybe have some yellow yarn at home or maybe some raffia or maybe even some cotton balls that you want to use to lay your baby Jesus in, that's perfectly okay too. But if you're using whatever you're using, once you've, if you're using this and once you've got it cut out, then you can put a little bit of glue on it. Or if you're using yarn, whatever you're using, glue it onto your heart. Okay, now once you've done that, then you need to cut out your little swaddling, your little swaddling clothes for baby Jesus. Now, this part's a little bit trickier, but I know you can do it. You just need to make the, the bottom part a little bit fatter, come in a little bit at the top for his head, and then make a little head. Okay? And once you've done that, and then cut it out, and then once you've done that, glue that part on to your, whatever you're using for your manger, your hay. Okay. Then, whoops, mine's already stuck on. But once you've done that, then you need to make your little Jesus face. Now I use brown paper, but remember I said you could use whatever color you want. So cut out a little circle that's just a little bit smaller than your swaddling clothes. Cut out a little circle and then draw a face. You can give Jesus some hair if you want. I just gave him a little curly cue. And then give him some eyes, a little nose, and a mouth. I made Jesus smile because I think he's happy to be here. All right, how are you doing? Good. Okay, so the second to last step is the words. Of all gifts, both big and small, my Jesus is the best of all. So you can do that on a computer. You can write out the words yourself if you're good at writing, or you can ask an adult to help you. Whatever makes it work for you. Now, this one I did long and skinny. This one I did a little bit shorter. Whatever, again, whatever works for you. And I did mine in blue, but you can use whatever color you want. If you're printing it off the computer, yours would be on computer paper. So it'd be maybe white or whatever color. It, it really doesn't matter. But once you've got it written out, of all gifts, both big and small, my Jesus is the best of all. Okay, once you've got that written out, then you're going to put some glue on the back and put it on your heart. Okay. Just like that. Okay. And then the very last thing that we need to do is punch a hole 
in your heart and then you can use ribbon or I used some yarn that I had or a string so that you can hang it somewhere. I'm going to hang mine on my Christmas tree, but you can hang yours wherever you want. You can hang it on your door to your bedroom, just wherever it makes you happy and wherever you'll see it to remind you how very much Jesus loves you. So I hope you had fun doing this craft with me today and I hope that you will enjoy looking at your little baby Jesus craft. Have a great day and take care. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. Hi friends. Today we're going to learn the full version of Silent Night. Okay, let's do it. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace, silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar, Heavenly hosts sing hallelujah. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night. Son of God loves pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth.